Our final topic in trigonometry is chapter 8b, Polar Coordinates. In this chapter, we're going to focus on the comparison of polar coordinates with what we're normally used to working with, rectangular coordinates. You'll notice we'll use R values and theta values, and our thetas can be in both degrees and radians. The polar coordinate system is just another way to find location. Instead of the center of your coordinate system being the vertex, the vertex is now called the pole for the polar coordinate system. The initial ray on that right-hand side is going to represent the R value. And R is the measure for the length of that terminal ray. So it's almost like the number of circles you would count out, because it kind of looks like a bullseye. Instead of x and y, you're now going to have that r value, and then you'll have a theta rotation. So r is the length, and theta will be the rotating measure. Here's what we do to convert forms. If you have a coordinate in rectangular form, and you're converting to the polar form, there are two things you do to determine your r value and your theta value. The definition for r squared is it's x squared plus y squared. Whoops, let me get that in there correctly. There we go. It would be x squared plus y squared. To get r by itself, then you'd have to take the square root. And that tells you how far to the right or left you can go. To get the tangent or to get the angle value, we use the tangent ratio. On the unit circle, when we compared sine, cosine, and tangent, tangent was the definition y divided by x. And we'll use that same definition to determine our theta rotation. Once we have that measure to get theta, we'll take the inverse. And that's how you convert. To work backwards, we're not going to use tangent at all. We're going to use sine and cosine. So if you know a polar coordinates that you have an r and a theta value, and you want to convert back to the rectangular form, the xy coordinate we're used to seeing, the x coordinate would be the same as r times cosine of your angle. The y value, since y represented the sine value, would be r times sine theta. So these are just formulas for you to remember. The key thing for this conversion is make sure you know if theta is in degrees or radians, because it can be either. So if you're typing things in on your calculator, you'd have to know what mode to be in. So let's try this out. As we do this, you always want to make sure to check to see what quadrant your coordinate is located in. With tangent, we have a couple of rules that we're going to have to remember from chapter 7. Here we're asked to plot each point on a rectangular coordinate system, then convert to polar. As we look at this first coordinate, 3, 4, if we plot that point, we're in quadrant 1. There's point 3, 4. Now to convert it to polar form, we apply those definitions from up above. To get the r value, that'll be our first step, we use the definition r squared equals x squared plus y squared. If we substitute in 3 and 4 for x and y, we have r squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, making r squared equal to 25. If we take the square root to get r by itself, r can equal positive or negative 5. In our case, we'll just pick positive 5. That's step 1. That means we have to count out to the fifth circle on our rotation. The second thing we do, or before we rotate, sorry, the second thing we do is determine our rotation. To get that second part of our coordinate in polar form, that theta value, we use the tangent definition. Tangent of theta equals y over x, and this would be 4 over 3. Now to get theta by itself, we take tan inverse.
Now it doesn't say we have to be in degrees or radians, so we can decide which measure we want to use. I would say let's just go with degrees. They're easier to kind of determine what quadrant we're in. So let's be in degree mode. And we'll round our answer to the nearest tenth. If we take tan inverse of four-thirds, our degree value is approximately 53.1 degrees. That's step two. Step three, we just write our answer in polar form. Our r comma theta definition is five comma 53.1 degrees. Now I zoomed in to plot this. If it's five, we count five circles to the right. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm way out here, but then I'm gonna rotate up 53.1 degrees. So I know here's 30, 45, but then 60 is the next red line. So I'm gonna go somewhere in between, that point right there. So that would be the location of R, or excuse me, five comma 53.1. What I'm going to do now is connect from the pole to that location. And then I'm going to scroll back down to show the comparison with our pole or with our rectangular coordinate system. If I scroll back down and do the same thing, whoops, maybe I'll get there, hang on, there's my pen. Draw that in, you'll notice those arrows are in the same direction. They're both in quadrant one. Let's try the example on the right. In example B, we have the coordinate negative 2, 5. And if we plot negative 2, 5, we now end up over in quadrant 2, just recognizing kind of location. And if I connect from the vertex to that point, we want a similar ray on our polar coordinate system. So now let's go through and determine our r value and our theta value. To find our r value, we follow that formula, r squared equals x squared, plus y squared. And here's where we have to be careful. Recognize that when you take negative two squared, that becomes positive four. And five squared is 25. Wow, there we go, kind of. R squared equals 29. So now we don't have a perfect square. R equals the square root of 29. We'll have to approximate it on our polar graph, but for now we'll keep our answer exact. In step two, to figure out our theta, we'll take tangent of theta equals y over x. Now here's where things get a little tricky. When we take our inverse, we follow business as usual, tan inverse of negative five halves. But when you type this in, some of you may recall from chapter seven, we get a negative angle rotation. That's going to be negative 68.2 degrees. And if we start at the right and rotate negative 68.2 degrees, that would put us in quadrant four. And we need to be over in quadrant two. So now we have to remember that rule for tangent, once we found one angle, how do we get the other possible angle option? If you remember that we just add it to 180, that's how we can determine the correct quadrant for this angle measure. If we take 180 plus that negative 68.2, we get 111.8. And guess what? That's in quadrant two where we need it to be. So that was that rule from chapter seven that we'll need to recall as we sketch these graphs. Step three, we just write out our ordered pair in polar form. Instead of x, y, we now have r comma theta, square root 29 comma, 111.8. And our goal is to be very similar to what our rectangular graph looked like. Now the square root of 29, we have to figure out how many circles that is. The square root of 29 is approximately 5.4. That means on our graph, we're going almost all the way out to the edge. Now, if you didn't print your notes off, I know, this gets kind of to be a bummer graph or graphing all these circles. Just try your best to create a bunch of bullseyes or like a bunch of circles within a bullseye and then count out to almost six. So we'll go about five and a half right in the middle and we're gonna rotate all the way over. There's 90. Now the next one would be 120 and we're not quite that far. 
So we'll go a little bit beyond that 90. There would be that point. And I'm going to erase that. Oops, not that part. Sorry. I'm going to erase that little line it took me to get there just so we know where we're at. Starting from the pole at the center, if you connect, you'll notice it looks very similar to what we graphed up above. And that's what we do to convert from rectangular form to polar form. There are several things to consider as we graph these polar coordinates. The R value will always go right or left on the x-axis. It'll go to the right if it's positive or the left if it's negative. The theta value can go clockwise or counterclockwise, doesn't matter. So clockwise or counterclockwise. But here's the tricky part with theta. I'll just go counterclock right there. Theta always starts at zero, whether you're on the right side or the left side of the graph. So it always starts at zero degrees. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. All right, let's take a look at some examples. All we're going to do on these four problems is sketch the location. We're not converting forms or anything. We're just going to plot these values. 3, 45. That means we count out 3 to the right, and then we rotate 45 degrees. This one should be pretty easy. If we simply count out three circles, we're right here, kind of in the middle on that x-axis, 45 degrees is that pi over 4. It's that location right there. I'm just going to put a dot on that portion of the graph and erase the path that I took to get there. So you don't have to draw that arc in if you don't want to. We just want to draw in that end location. This polar coordinate ends up in quadrant one. Simple enough. Now when we try this next one, things change up a little bit. Now as we think about our r and our theta, notice r is negative three. So now I'm going to count to the left three, and that's fine, but now we start at zero for our rotation, which seems super strange because we normally start at zero on that right-hand side. But when your R value is negative, we're now going to rotate. Here's 90 degrees. 120 would be 30 degrees more. It's down here in quadrant four. And that doesn't match with the appropriate quadrant and your original angle value because the R is negative. That means we are down here in quadrant four. So each time the R value or the theta value is negative, it kind of throws us a little bit off as far as our rotation process. Let's look at the other two that are measured in radians for the angle. The first angle with radians is 4, 7 pi over 6. This actually isn't so bad. Our r value and our theta value are both positive. That means I'll count out four circles to the right, and I simply rotate all the way around until I get to 7 pi over 6. That's my end location. And I'm just going to erase my path to get there, but that's where I want from the center of the graph at the pole, I just want it to go all the way over into quadrant three. Just like that. That's all you have to do for that one. In our last example, four comma negative three pi over four. So now if I count out four, three, four out here again, now we're going to count negative three pi over four, which means theta is now going to go in a clockwise direction. Remember when your theta value is negative, we go clockwise. Positive 3 pi over 4 would have put us in quadrant 2. But if we go clockwise the same amount, we actually end up in quadrant 3. Again. So now I'm going to erase my path to get there. Do, 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 do. And then connect it from the center to that end location. And that's graphing with your theta value in degrees or radians. And your r value could be positive or negative. Back in chapter seven, we had things called coterminal angles, and that was when we would rotate uh, somewhere in our quadrant on the unit circle. We can do that same idea with polar coordinates. It says plot each point for which the polar coordinates are given. Then determine two other pairs of coordinates for that same point. That means we're just looking for 
coterminal polar coordinates. Let's start off with example A and just plot that location. If we want to sketch the location for negative 260, that's my r value and my theta value, negative 2 means we're counting over 2 to the left. But remember, we start at 0 on that side. And if I'm only rotating 60, here's 30, 45, and 60. We're at this location right here. That's where we want our graph to connect to. So to go from the center to that location, there's my initial coordinate. To find something that's coterminal, these are the rules to apply. It's very similar to what we've done in the past. Your R value can either be positive or negative 2, and then we just need to rotate to end at the same location. So you can add and subtract 360 if you keep your R value the same, or you can add and subtract 180 if you change your R value sign. Here are several options, just like we had several options for coterminal back in chapter seven. So some choices, just to give you an idea of what this looks like. If we keep our R value negative, and we simply add 360 to 60 degrees, that would be 420. That means we'd count over to negative two and we'd go all the way around once and end at that same location. If we went negative two and subtracted 360, that would be negative 300. And again, we'd go out to that negative two location. Just get rid of all the rotating marks here. And if we went negative 300, we'd end up, voila, at that same location. Other ways we could get there, think about going to the right if we changed our R value to positive two. If we counted positive two, what would our rotation have to be to get us to that location? 240 degrees. And that's what you get if you add 180 to 60. So there are infinitely many answers. You just need to come up with two of them. And it doesn't matter if your R value is positive or negative or if your theta value is positive or negative. You just have to get to that same end location. All right, we're just gonna let all of that sink in. Tomorrow we'll finish example B and some converting at the end for 8.6 day one.